Hey everybody, welcome to another Pro Tools training series video presented to you by Pro Media Training. Remember that if you have any questions about any of this video content or any questions about Pro Tools in general, don't hesitate to give us a call. My name is Mihai and with me today is DJ Ray. And today we're going to talk about using Elastic Audio in Pro Tools. There's a ton of different things you can do with Elastic Audio from songwriting to production. It's a huge benefit. Let's go ahead and take a look. Here we are in our session. As you can see, we've already imported some audio regions within the session. Now the problem is, is that the current loops that we have don't actually match the tempo of our session. If I were to select two measures in my actual session, let's do that now, and I play that back, notice that skip at the end, that actually means that it's not in time with two measures within our actual session. So therefore these audio regions need to be elasticized in order to fit in time with the tempo that we want to do our song at. So here's what we do. Every single audio track has this little button right here which is the elastic audio button. When you click on it you'll get this pop-up menu which will allow you to select from one of four different elastic audio algorithms. Now each one is unique and is meant to work with specific kinds of information. You have polyphonic, which is meant to work with polyphonic type of material, things that have multiple notes at once or multiple pitches, things like maybe piano chords or guitar chords. You have rhythmic, which is primarily based around rhythmic or drum and percussion oriented material. The monophonic algorithm, which is primarily based around things that have a single note at a time, possibly a lead vocal for instance, or a bass guitar. Monophonic would really deal with anything that isn't playing more than one note at a time. And then finally you have very speed for information and audio that actually speeds up and slows down over time. Since we're dealing with drums and percussion in our case, we're going to select the rhythmic algorithm. You'll notice that when I select the algorithm and activate Elastic Audio, the audio regions on the track actually kind of gray out for a second. That's because Elastic Audio is analyzing in the background what's going on. Now that we have Elastic Audio active on both tracks, let's go ahead and just kind of increase their size and make it easier to work with. All right, another important aspect of working with Elastic Audio is something known as the time-based selector. If you notice to the left hand side of the Elastic Audio button, there's this little clock. This is actually known as a time-based selector. When you click on it, you have the option of setting the track to either a sample-based track or a tick-based track. Traditionally, audio tracks are always sample-based, except in this case when we're working with Elastic Audio and we want our audio to dynamically change along with the tempo as if it were MIDI. So let's go ahead and change both of these to tick-based tracks. This will just make it easier to work with in the future. Now, since these have been elasticized, one easy thing we can do is select the audio region and right click on it, and there's an option here to conform to tempo. Watch what happens to this region. We'll do the same thing for the second region. They've automatically been stretched to fill exactly two measures worth of time within this current session's tempo of 128 BPM. So let's go ahead and take a listen to it. Okay, that was easy enough, but here's some other things we can do. Let's go ahead and zoom out, and at the same time, we're going to go ahead and duplicate these regions by hitting Apple D, or Control D, on a PC. Because we're going to take a look at working with Elastic Audio in more intricate ways. One of, this, one of the things that will help out a lot is actually changing the view on the tracks. Notice here where it says Waveform. This is known as a track view selector. Because we have Elastic Audio active on the track, when we click on this track view selector, one of the things that we can look at is the analysis view or the warp view. The analysis view, if we take a look at it and zoom in, shows you where Elastic Audio has analyzed transient hits within the audio region. Remember that this is a rhythmic based algorithm, so it's looking at transient hits in rhythmic timing to one another. In warp view, you can actually use your grabber tool to 
manipulate each of these warp markers as they're known. Now, remember, this is all going to be dependent on the mode that you're working in. Right now we're working in grid mode, so things will snap to a grid. Right now our grid is set to one whole bar, meaning that it's going to have a grid interval every measure. Let's make this a little bit smaller. Let's go down to uh, eighth notes, just so that way we have eighth note variations within our tempo that we can work with. So let's go ahead and switch both track views to warp view. So that way we can start messing around and showing you some of the possibilities of what Elastic Audio can do. Let's take a look at this top region for instance. With my warp view, using my grabber tool, I can simply grab the end of this region and shrink it down in size, therefore changing its tempo. If we do that to both of them, check out what happens. We've essentially taken that audio region and we've made it play back twice as fast. Or we can just simply take the audio region, drag it back out, bring it back to its original timing, or we can go in the other direction and just decide to make this thing play back twice as slow, or at half speed. Now this is a really easy method to allow you to, to take a loop and fit it to a tempo of a session that you want to start working with, especially from a songwriting perspective. You know, we don't need to mess around with this too much. We can just simply take our audio loops that have now been elasticized to fit in time and utilizing some of the tools within Pro Tools, make this loop on for a while. Let's use the loop trim tool. Now essentially we have 16 measures of this loop. Now we can go ahead and lay down a vocal, lay down a guitar part, something to allow us to progress the song a little further than just the, uh, than just the, the guitar, the vocal on its own. Now that we've messed around with drum loops for a little while, here's another way that you can actually use Elastic Audio within your session. If you utilize your workspace browser, let's go to the window menu, workspace, and you use this to search for audio files. One thing that you have is Elastic Audio available to you within the actual workspace environment itself. Notice at the top here you have this metronome button. That is Elastic Audio enabled for the workspace window itself. And notice right to the right hand side of the button you actually have the selector of what type of algorithm it is that you're auditioning with. Now let's take a listen. We have some audio files here of some piano parts and we've chosen this one. Now it's obviously just playing back at whatever speed it was recorded at. Now if I want to hear that in time with the actual session, I can activate the Elastic Audio button. And in this case, I'm going to select as polyphonic as the algorithm to utilize. So now when we play this back, it's automatically playing back at the tempo of the session. Now another really handy feature that you have kind of tying the session and the workspace environment together with Elastic Audio is this. If we were to actually play the session, let's just go ahead and mute that for a second, and then we go back and actually audition in our workspace browser while the session is playing back, it'll actually wait for it to come to a downbeat and audition the audio file in time with the session. So just take a listen. pretty nifty stuff. Now since Elastic Audio is active within the workspace environment, let's just go ahead and shut down playback. And it allowed me to audition the audio file in time with the actual tempo of the session. If I were to drag this file into my session to utilize, let's just do that by dragging it to the tracks column. Notice that in my session it actually automatically puts it onto an audio track 
where Elastic Audio has already been active with Polyphonic because that's the algorithm that we've chosen within the uh, workspace environment. And the track is already in time with the rest of our tracks in the session. Now that we have another track that's been elasticized, we can treat it in much the same way that we treated the drum tracks from before. If I change the view of the track to my warp view, and if I use the grabber tool once again, I can come and grab any of these warp markers and drag this audio file around to stretch it out like a rubber band. So whereas before it was actually playing over the course of four measures within our session tempo. Let's go ahead and take a listen to that. Cool, what we can do is just grab this, drag it out, and now we have that playing back at halftime. Or any var variation of this stuff, you can copy and paste these audio regions and treat each one completely differently from the other. And now, just by messing around with Elastic Audio and just simple copy and pastes, we have something that sounds like this. Another thing that's quite innovative about Elastic Audio is the ability to transpose audio information. For instance, let's look at this piano track we were messing around with before. I'm going to triple click on it with the selector tool just to select everything. Now I can either right click on the region and choose Elastic Properties from the drop down. Notice in this window, at the very bottom here, you'll see Pitch Shift where you can actually pitch shift the audio in semitones and scents. For instance, we could take this down an entire octave, which is 12 semitones. We can bring it back up to zero. Or we can go up in any number of, of semitones or scents. Now, if that's not enough, you can also go to the event menu under event operations and choose the normal transpose feature you'd normally use for MIDI information. Here, it allows you to actually transpose by octaves and semitones. So between the Elastic Properties window and the event operations transpose function, you can transpose audio that's been elasticized by octaves, semitones, and scents, so you can fine tune anything the way you want. Well, that about does it for us today. Hope you enjoyed this video, and remember that if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us. We'll be more than happy to help.